stuff, which I'm very happy about. All right, so special command. We're going to go over a very special command called Blast. Uh, so what we have here is a breach team. It's an independent specialist team you can use. And they are equipped with demo charges. Uh, special item used by breach teams and uh, engineers. It allows us to blow holes through walls and buildings and that sort of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to move them up to here. It's a special movement command. It'll only be available if it is a, uh, uh, a unit equipped with them. Wow, those are just going nuts. Okay, let's turn that off. I'm so looking forward to that uh, that fix. I got the the fix for those shaders got put in yesterday, but I don't have that build yet. Okay, so we hit blast, then we put it on the other side of the obstacle, and anything in between this command is going to get blasted. You only want to use it for one. The AI is going to get confused if you try and use it for more than one obstacle. Things can go very wrong. So if you need to go through like this and then go through the building, you want to use multiple commands. Whoops, what did I just do? There we go. All right, so they're going to move up to here. They're going to hold position while they blast, and they're going to blast through the wall. This is very useful for making your own entry points um, in urban terrain. Surprise the enemy, not go through a position he's expecting it. So they're going to hold position for a second. Then eventually they're going to blast through. And that's the blast command. Enemy units on the other side of the hand, you can also go through, um, you can also go through buildings with it. Um, any enemy units in the building will be stunned when, uh, when it goes off. So we'll just do another one. So you can make your own entry points. Uh, demo charges will be down here. They look like this right here. And there will be a number denoting how many of them the unit has. In this case, they got four left. Okay, now we're just going to fast forward. I'm going to actually save just in case something else happens. Um, I'm actually going to fast forward through until the Oplot tanks arrive. Actually, I do have some teams with Urban Breach kits. Purple Heart. Good catch. Okay, so uh, some teams, American rifle teams, Russian recon teams, um, and maybe some other units in the future, have what are called breach kits. These are sort of like demo charges, except they can only be used for blasting holes in walls. The demo charges can also be used, uh, the engineers carry, can also be used for attacking vehicles at close range, and they can also be used for blowing holes in fortifications. Um, in this case, uh, with the breach kits that some units have, you can only use them for blasting holes in walls. So it's basically unit improvised explosives for, you know, making entry points. So, for example, this rifle squad can be given a, a blast and it'll do the same thing as the, uh, as that breach team did back there. Any day now. Any day now. Part of this is um, just unit experience levels and whatnot. The engineers and the breach teams are way faster at this stuff. There we go. Alright, vehicles arrived. I actually want to do something with the engineers really quickly. I keep saying engineers. They are engineers. They are breach team, but they are also engineers. See? You can actually... Someone asked um, if you can uh, blast them through a hole without uh, 
making them run through it, you can just uh, set the waypoint near it instead of right on it. So I put the waypoint here instead of on this side. They blasted the walls uh, adjacent to them. Okay, vehicles. So, we've got to clean up the battlefield. We've got some Oplot M tanks. Uh, most advanced tank the Ukrainian forces have. Very neat looking tank. Alright, so while we're talking about protection icons, you can actually look them up in the manual, in the icons and reference section, it'll give you an explanation of all of them. But I'll go ahead and just uh, detail them out right here. This little pillowy smoke one right here, those are smoke grenades. Uh, the vehicle, if it's threatened, it'll pop these smoke grenades and they're IR blocking smoke, so thermals can't look through them. The vehicle can use that to retreat safely. Uh, this square icon down here is active protection systems, which we're going to see demonstrated in just a second. We've also got laser warning receivers, so if an enemy vehicle lases the tank, it will know. You'll see a little laser warning text pop up. We'll see that. Um, uh, actually, I'll probably have to demonstrate that in a separate scenario since these tanks don't shoot back. It also has a, uh, I think it's called an optronic system. It will, it's this little box here. It will actually um, try and dazzle incoming anti-tank guided missiles and make a miss. And that's the little uh, squiggly line here. I know I'm using very technical terms here. And then the one in the upper left-hand corner is explosive reactive armor, which we'll see demonstrated in a moment. A lot of vehicles have explosive reactive armor. If you're not familiar with what it is, it's basically an explosive sandwich between two metal plates. Um, here's some of it right here that's kind of a weird-looking explosive reactive armor. Let me go to the Soviet or the Russian vehicles for a more uh, for a more standard view of them. So like these little uh, blocks on the vehicle here are explosive reactive armor. Basically what happens is when a certain right type of weapon hits it, like a heat weapon, or in some cases even uh, armor piercing, what happens is it sets off the explosive in there and then it drives the metal plates apart and that increases the amount of penetration area that the projectile has to go through to reach the vehicle. It can also help break it up and deflect it. So it basically adds another level of protection to the vehicle very useful against high-explosive um, anti-tank weapons like missiles. Alright, so let's go ahead and bring these guys up. And hopefully that crash was related to the BTRs and not something downrange. Yep. If I had to guess, I'd say the crash probably has something to do with the BTR's uh, missile. There might be some graphic that's missing for it, or some bit of data that's wrong. It's causing a crash when the missile gets used. That'd be my guess. Just go ahead and fast forward to this turn. Viking ass is splash damage to surrounding infantry from ERA blocks detonating model. Yes, yes it is. Any explosion is going to be dangerous to infantry. You want to keep your infantry a certain distance away from vehicles with the ERA. Although to be fair, you should probably keep them a certain distance away from any vehicle because an infantry, uh, a vehicle exploding is also dangerous to your health, not just one with ERA. So either way, you should probably keep your infantry away directly from vehicles. guys to use a missile because I want to demonstrate something. In the meantime, we'll just let them shoot away. Matt, aka Gunnersman, asks if the ERA block disappears. Usually, yes. You'll see the block actually disappear once it gets expended. All right, so there's an example of hit reactive armor. Um, that reactive armor just saved this tank's butt. Yeah, so reactive armor can come in really handy. 
I'm waiting for these guys to use a missile. So Oplot tanks, um, Russian and uh, most Russian Ukrainian tanks can actually fire anti-tank guided missiles out of their tank cannons. It's something the Abrams doesn't have. Hey, penetrate again. Reactive armor saved him again. Oh, that was a really long range shot. There he goes, he finally got a hit in there. Oh yeah, you can see it right here. So, here's a good example where hit decals can help you reconstruct things. So, you notice he hit here. The ERA block definitely saved the tank because um, it's gone, it was it, it was expended, and then he put another shot right in the same spot, and you notice he drilled through it this time, because there's no ERA block to save him. Also, we already know that that's not the correct graphic for a tank yet, that's actually a bug that was introduced in the last build, I think it's already been fixed. It should be a smaller hole. But yeah, let's, let's check that out, watch this. Yeah, the camera's all shaky because it, it was near an explosion, okay. see that happen. Ah, oh, it happened at the end of the turn. Anyways, yeah, so it uncovered the ERA block here, and now there's an exposed section of armor, and then he got a shot in there, and took it out. And the question is, the t is are the impact effects different if a tank is hit with AP versus heat? Yes. Indeed. Um, although if you get a clean um, impact with uh, armored piercing and you get the vehicle to brew up, it's still going to make a really big explosion. Come on guys, use a missile. Someone use a missile. No one will use a missile, they're not paying, they're not playing along. They're too smart for me because using the missile would actually be a bad thing in this circumstance, because all those tanks are equipped with active protection systems. Oh well, we'll just have to start another scenario. Um, I'll just make a little quick scenario and demonstrate it. These guys are too smart for me. They're using the, they're using the proper weapon system, which is the tank cannon for these things. Okay, so we are actually done with this scenario. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next one. So we're going to hit ceasefire. Total victory, of course, because it's a training mission.